Hello, my name is Giovanni Marco Cosimano and I will talk to you about study design for us and daily work and routine in an experimental RAS facility. Feel free to stop the presentation anytime and make your own notes. If at the end you have still question, feel free to contact me by email. You will find my personal details in the last slide. So let's begin. As you can see, I would like to give you a general overview of this presentation content. There are four different sections. Section one, named daily work and routine, where I will talk about general husbandry of our system, describing all the routinary activities that are performed by specialized staff to ensure the correct operation of the system. Section two, called study design RAS. This is a more scientific part where I will describe different types of studies that can be performed in a RAS system, such as nutrition, vaccine development and testing, challenge with virus, bacteria or parasites, showing also advantage and challenges of a RAS as well as how to write an experimental plan and what requirements you need. Section 3, where uh, some case studies will be described. And last one, Section 4, where I will talk about monitoring and sampling during a trial. So, first of all, what is a RAS? A recirculating aquaculture system represents a new and unique way to farm fish. Instead of the traditional method of growing fish outdoors in open ponds and raceways, this system rears fish at high density, in indoor tanks with a controlled environment. The circulating system filters and clean water for recycling back through fish culture tanks. There are many pros and some cons about using a RAS system, and we will analyze them one by one. What about the pro? Intensive production, rearing large number of fish in a relatively small place, indoor fish farming in uh, tanks may revolutionize fish production in the same way that confinement system altered the pork and poultry farming industries. This is an excellent alternative to open pond culture, where low density, extensive culture of fish are reared in three large ponds and uh, are subject to losses from diseases, parasite, predation, pollutants, stress, and seasonally suboptimal growing condition. Water and land conserved. RAS conserve both land and water. They maximize production in a relatively small area and land, and use a relatively small amount of water. Similarly, since water is used, the water volume requirement, requirements in RAS are only a small percentage of what conventional open pond culture demands. They offer a promising solution to water use conflicts, water quality and waste disposal. This concern will continue to intensify in the future uh, as the water demand for a wide reason uh, uses escalates. Location flexibility. RAS are particularly useful in area where land and water are expensive and not really available. They are most suitable in northern areas where a cold or cool climate can slow fish growth in outdoor system and prevent year-round production. They can be located close to large markets as, uh, for example, urban areas, and thereby reducing hauling distances and transportation costs. RAS can, be, can use municipal water supply but deconination is necessary, and discharge waste into sanitary sewer system. Nearly all species that are commonly farmed can be grown in high density when confined in uh, tank systems. Species and harvest flexibility. Rust are currently being used to grow hundreds of species like fish, crustacean, mussel, and algae. Rust farming offers the opportunity to manipulate production to meet demand throughout the year and to harvest at the most profitable time during the year. Advanced feed management. In a RAS system, feeding is highly controlled and waste is minimized. Fish are fed with manual or automatic system to maximize the growth performance. 
Removal of suspended matter and metabolites is necessary to ensure a good water quality and they can be reused as fertilizer or source of nutrients. Other pros are durability of the tank equipment, reduced dependency of antibiotics, high quality of fish, broad range of species irrespective of temperature requirements, reduced stress due to water condition, pollution and predation. What about the cons? First of all, a constant power supply is required and a backup system in case of power cuts is needed. The initial financial investment is higher compared to the ponds and the rice ways. Moreover, the complex system and required skilled technician assistance is necessary to manage um, the rust successfully. Deterioration of water quality due uh, to high density in the tank. How a rust system works? This is a basic example of how a rust system works. The water flows from the biofilter to the tanks after a process of, of oxygenation, mechanical and biological filtration and disinfection. The system requires energy, feed, water, and produce biomass, CO2, and waste. This is how a rust system looks like. There is the biological filtration and mechanical filtration carried out by either the biofilter and the drum filter. The oxygenation happens inside the uh, oxygen and ozone cone and the, the disinfection uh, on the second step through uh, UV and ozone um, and the water flow generated by a specific water pump that you can see highlighted here. It's useful to visualize the real system so we can discuss about general husbandry keeping in mind each single equipment. So let's get started with section one named daily work and routine. I will talk to you about the general husbandry of a RAS. The general husbandry of a RAS system can be divided into four macro categories named equipment check, water quality parameters, fish husbandry, cleaning and disinfection. Each of them play an essential role in the correct operation of the system. The equipment check is essential to ensure that everything is working properly. The daily check are performed by trained personnel and recorded multiple times. If an equipment fails a check, a corrective action is needed until the problem is solved. If there is a technical problem that needs a maintenance assistance, an independent team will uh, take over. The drum filter, protein skimmer, UV light, blower, heat and water pump, and tanks are inspected and respective parameters are recorded in official documents. As already discussed, the water quality plays a major role in our system, and staying on top of it is very important. Therefore, taking regular measurement of the water is necessary to monitor the, water, the water's uh, quality. Based on the list of parameters shown in the slide, it's necessary um, that all the steps can be taken to improve the, the water quality. Talking about fish husbandry, the daily health and behavior assessment, feeding and mortality conduction, if any, is important to monitor growth and welfare of the fish. Lastly, a proper cleaning and disinfection procedure, coadjuvant with high biosecurity standard, are essential in a closed system, whether in a commercial farm or in a research facility. Now, let's get started with section one. The, the first equipment listed is the drum filter that consists of a cylindrical filter membrane that is partly submerged in a slurry to be filtered. The inside of the drum is at lower than under pressure as the drum rotates through uh, the slurry, the liquid is sucked through the membrane, leaving solid to cake on the membrane surface while the drum is submerged. A knife or a blade is positioned to remove the product from the surface. It is widely used in different fields, including wastewater treatment, sludge dewatering, chemical manufacturing, cosmetic, and food processing. It is a self clinic mechanic filter for solid removal and represent the first stage of cleaning of water returning from the fish tank. The solid, coated in a mesh with a variable size, in many cases about 60 microns, are removed with high water pressure. 
The daily routine consists of checking the mesh, place um, correctly, no holes, and uh, proper cleaning. Spray bar working and uh, nozzle clean. A deep inspection is performed to evaluate if the water pressure is in range and if there is any clog in the nozzles. A pre-filter and sensor cleaning. If the upper part of the sensor is not properly cleaning, the sensitivity is lower and the backwashing will be delayed or deleted. Lastly, a check of the water pump and power supply is performed to ensure the correct operation. Rotate scheme or foam fractioner are used to remove a refined solid and dissolve protein from the water. Protein skimmer removes the salt particles from a wastewater by absorption of the particles at the gas liquid surface. Water molecules that border a knife surface tend to align themselves. Foam fractionators are especially suitable for removal of particles smaller than 30 micron and particles that have electric charge. As shown in the picture, it consists of a trickle filtration tower with a two-stage process. First, the percolation through the tower allows for the casting and removal of dissolved CO2. Secondly, the, fo the foam formed on top of the water is collected at the bottom. As a result, proteins are trapped in the foam and removed. The daily routine consists of ensure a correct flow, not too low, not too strong, check the foam production and removal from the system, and cleaning the foam box. As you might know, uh, microorganisms, including disease-causing bacteria, are killed or the, their DNA is significantly damaged when exposed to an adequate fluence or dose of ultraviolet light. This fluence is defined by the period and intensity of the exposure of the ultraviolet radiation of the proper wavelength, typically between 240 and 290 nanometers. The UV light represents the final stage before the water returns to the fish tank in a closed system and is essential to reduce the bacterial load and to break down any residual ozone in the water that might be harmful for the fish. The daily check must ensure the correct operation of the pole and the, water, the correct water flow. The air blower ensures aeration and movement of the biofilter as well as carbon dioxide removal from the system. The daily routine activity is to assess the correct flow and movement of biofilter as shown in the video included. This is an example of biomedia movement within our system. This video is part of a trial that has been performed to establish which biocarrier had the best time conversion among five different types, and the result will be shown in the following slide. Heat pump and water pump are um, of paramount importance in our system. The heat pump utilizes the sun's free heat by collecting and absorbing energy from the outside air. This energy is then compressed and transferred to the water. In the water pump, water eats the rotating impeller, so the energy of the impeller is transferred to the water, forcing the water out by the centrifugal force. The water is displaced upwards and more water can now enter the suction of the pump to replace the displaced water. The daily routine activity are mainly um, to check the correct water flow, the absence of leak and no error message showing in the control unit. Finally, tanks. They are simply water containers made from different materials such as plastic, concrete, metal, fiberglass that hold live animals. For this reason, a non-toxic material is essential. The basic design of a fish tank consists of water overflow, stem pipe, drain, inlet valve, and lid to avoid fish jumping out. The daily routine activities consist of checking a correct flow, absence of leak, and cleaning siphoning if needed. Now, let's talk about water quality. I will be very brief about this subject because there will be other presentations specifically. 
as you probably know, water quality is a term that reflects the overall ability of cultural water to provide optimal growth condition for the species of interest. The basic of understanding water quality in RAS involves maintaining variable within ranges that promote growth while preventing disease of the cultural animals. Each species, whether it is a fresh water rather than seawater, as well as cold water rather than warm water, has specific parameters range. As a general concept, the routine analysis of water quality are typically divided into groups. First group, where the daily check is performed twice by 10 staff and recorded continuously by a monitoring system, if available. This includes temperature, the easiest variable to understand and manipulate when discussing water quality in a RAS. The ideal temperature for any cultural animal is generally considered to be the figure that produces the fastest growth while promoting the healthiest environment. The closer to the ideal temperature for a cultural animal, the more productive, productive and economically, economically variable a RAS system can be. Dissolved oxygen, Reducitivity usually increases with opti optimum oxygen level, which makes oxygen management a key for optimal performance in your system. To make sure that the fish blood can take up all the oxygen that it needs, a rather high oxygen concentration in the water is required. It is necessary to ensure that there is never a deficiency so that sufficient oxygen is available for the fish all the time. The fish oxygen consumption is dependent on its metabolic rate and feed intake and increases with the water temperature. However, the oxygen content of the water decreases as the water temperature increases, as warmer water can hold less oxygen. pH, aquaculture species will usually die quickly if the pH is less than 4 and greater than 11. Most species can tolerate a pH between 6 and 9, 9 fairly well, but they are usually stressed by pH outside this range, resulting in less growth and greater susceptibility to disease. Salinity, it depends mainly on the nature of the water, fresh, reddish, or salt water. Alkalinity, total alkalinity is the measurement of all bases in the water, and it is expected as milligram per liter of part per million of calcium carbonate. A second group, where the nitrogen is checked once a day and repeated if a value is out of range. These include ammonia. One of the biggest concerns in the design and operation of RAS is toxic nitrogen, which takes three basic forms. The first waste product resulting from nitrogen metabolites or the breakdown of protein is ammonia. Ammonia takes two forms in water, an ionized form, NH3, which is toxic, and an ionized form, which is non-toxic. At a lower pH, there is more of the ionized form of ammonia and less of the ionized form. This relationship between pH and ammonia may be the second most important concept to understand in aquaculture production. Nitrite is the second form of nitrogen formed from ammonia by autotrophic and heterotrophic bacteria. It is toxic to nearly all life and can be transformed by very few bacteria to the nitrate form, which is far less toxic. Nitrate is the end product of aerobic toxic nitrogen transformation and requires water exchange or an anaerobic treatment process to remove uh, as nitrogen, as nitrogen gas, back into the atmosphere. The last two subjects of section one are related to fish husbandry and cleaning procedure. Talking about fish husbandry, RAS, RAS allow for uh, almost full control of the husbandry condition. A good state of welfare in fish can only be realized if biological requirements and specific requirements of the cultivated species is well known. The evaluation of fish welfare is not easy to assess and it requires specific training provided by experienced personnel or veterinarian. Generally speaking, the fish husband routine can be divided into macro categories. Health assessment and feeding. The health assessment consists primarily of observation, classification and recording of any anormality in behavior. 
observation, classification and recording of the immortalities, evaluation of potential KIE fish, the meaning is a fish with evident sign of disease that will be terminated to avoid any additional suffering. There are some uh, clinical signs to better understand the health assessment, and they are listed in the table showed. Loss of equilibrium, as a, as a description, horizontal orientation, vertical orientation, loss of buoyancy control, abnormal swimming, lethargy, hyperactivity, spiral swimming, abnormal ventilatory, gulping, increased degrees of ercular movement, lesions like retinophthalmia, ulcer and eroded fins, and other like aggression. Feeding is one of the largest expenses when our system is up and running, and an accurate feeding calculation is vital when planning a new system. What makes feeding so important in a propulsion system? Simply because it's a closed-loop system, everything you put into it is going to stay there, unless you take steps to remove it. Feed goes into one hand of the fish and comes out from the other as feces. In addition, increased activity during feeding elevates the respiration of the fish, increasing CO2 and reducing oxygen. All of that is going to affect the water quality, so you need to design the system to either remove these elements or convert them in something that is not harmful for the fish. When you think about an aquavalto recirculating system, it's really processing the feed more than processing the fish. Feeding is the thing that you need to get an handle on at the outset uh, because it drives all the calculation and determines your overall water quality and system performance. For instance, we know that a kilogram of feed, feed we generally produce 200 grams of solid waste, one kilogram of oxygen is consumed and create 1.2 kilogram of CO2. There are other factors that affect these numbers, such as the size of the fish and the water temperature. But as long as we know the production goal for the system, for example, the target biomass, the feed type and the feed rate, we can determine the proper design for the system to maintain optimum water quality. There are some additional elements to consider as well, such as the amount of protein in the feed, which influence ammonia level into the water, Protein levels are usually related to life stage of the fish that you are raising, as younger fish require more protein for optimum growth. Fish can be fed by hand, by automatic feeder, and by demand feeders. Many fish farmers like to hand feed their fish uh, to ensure that fish are, fish are healthy, feeding vigorously, and exhibiting no problem. The amount of feed provided depends on the final goal, growth, test, or production. But as a general concept, fish feeding can be split into three main categories. Fixed ratio, the feed amount is calculated based on feeding guidelines, percentage of body weight per day, that are different from species to species and life stage. Satiation, point at which fish are full and do not desire to eat anything more. It's mainly used in experimental trial. Ad libitum, animals are fed without restriction and feed is provided up to 24 hours per day. These are some feeding companies uh, that provide generally feeding guidelines available for a better understanding of nutritional requirements and feeding strategies. In a daily routine, feeding consists of three different steps. Feed preparation, feeding performed at the check, usually it's between three and four times, five times per day, and recording of daily feed intake. The video uh, showed um, a feeding check performed at uh, ABC facility. As previously mentioned, the last section of a general husband feeding and disinfection is as important as the previous one. Husband equipment is a potential vehicle for cross contamination, hence, a biosecurity protocol for disinfection is necessary to prevent the transmission or spreading of pathogen within the facility. There are several ways to prevent pathogen spreading in a commercial or experimental facility, and most of them imply use of chemicals like bleach, ethanol, disinfectant solution in general. In our experimental facility, the biosecurity requirements are related to equipment in general like boots, foot, but gloves, 70% um, of ethanol uh, sprayer, rinsing water and biosilk bucket, broom, brush, buckets. The daily routine activities is comprehensive of hand and boots disinfection, 
each time that you step inside a system, you need to uh, disinfect your hand and use your uh, provided boots. Immersion of used equipment in virus it plus rinsing bucket. We have a very strict procedure about disinfection of the equipment each time that an equipment is used has to be placed for a certain uh, uh, duration of time inside the virus it solution to disinfect properly and then rinse in a um, proper rinsing bucket. Spraying any used equipment with 70% ethanol. Lids, floor, drain, and tanks cleaning after each feeding, but in general after each check. Following a strict biosecurity, the risk to spread a pathogen is still present, but is less likely. Now, let's talk about section two and uh, study design for us. As I said before, this is a more scientific part and is meant to show what are the most common categories of studies that can be conducted in a RAS experimental facility. As you can see, each block consists of different types of studies that can be performed. Nutritional studies focus on uh, food and substance in the food that helps live organisms, animal or plant, and plants to grow and stay healthy. Trial can be conducted on uh, functional fit. They promote the growth and the health of cultivated organisms, improve the immune system, and induce physiological benefits beyond traditional feed. For example, prebiotics, probiotics, enzymes, organic acids, yeast, mycotoxin binder, microalgae. Novel protein. Novel proteins are any type of protein that does not come from the source that have dominated our diets for generation. For example, insect, seaweed, single cell protein. Life feed and enrichment, generally using hatcheries, are used to stimulate predation and to provide a full nutrient requirements for fish larvae. For example, artemia, microalgae, rotifers, copepods, pigment, the appearance of an animal product, especially the colors, plays an important role on its marketing. Color, nutritional value, health appearance, freshness, and sensory tests are the subconscious elements involved in the selection of a product. In the diet of fish, for which pigmentation is important, synthetic and natural carotenoid source are included to address uh, this. Carotenoids contribute to the yellow, orange, and red colors found in the skin, shell, or endoskeleton of several important fish and shellfish. Digestibility, in order to formulate feed and choose ingredients for uh, fish farming is essential to consider not only the quantity of protein necessary for a balanced diet, but also the quality of this component. This is because the composition of this nutrient can directly affect digestibility in aquaculture. Digestibility, in turn, affects nutrition, health, growth, and development of the animals. Furthermore, low digestibility in aquaculture can interfere in water quality due to debris that can accumulate in the environment. Second category is about vaccine testing. Simple, safe, and effective way of protecting animals against harmful disease before they come into, into contact with them. Among the trials that can be performed, special attention must be put on health studies, vaccine developments, efficacy studies, duration of immunity, and batch release. To test the efficacy, of a new vaccine in the event of pathogen outbreaks, fish can be injected with a pathogen, bacteria, virus, and parasite. And this is highlighted in this box where um, it uh, shows challenge trial. In the last category, named others, there are listed studies that don't belong um, to any of the previous lists but can be performed as a parallel study to develop, for example, archery protocols, survival and growth of fish larvae, testing of AI technology, automation in feeding, development of algorithms to assess feeding behavior, trial with new advanced technology in water disinfection, ozone, ultrasound, as well as testing new biofiltration technology. Regardless of the type of study, some requirements are of paramount importance in a study plan. The experimental design is a detailed plan for collecting and using data to identify, to identify causal relationships. Through careful planning, the design of an experiment allows your data collection 
to have a reasonable chance of detecting effects and testing hypotheses that answer your research questions. During the design process, some preliminary activities must be conducted to fulfill the study requirements. As an example, in an additional study, the preliminary requirements can be listed as follows. Literature research, a strong literature research of the study being conducted, results, originality of the experiment, experimental plan, replicability and reference are essential. Species requirements. The nutritional and environmental requirements are vital when you design a new study. Each species is unique and to reflect its true nature, each requirement must be respected. Reputation. It's important because it has information about the reliability of the, of the conclusion of your study that can be drawn from your data. The statistical methods that assess the reliability rely on replication. Number of individuals, this is still uh, linked with a um, statistic point of view. Number of individuals refer to a statistically significant portion of a population, not an entire population. So only the animals that you're going to use in the experiment. Randomization. Randomization ensures that there is no bias in uh, treatment allocation. And in the long run, the subject in each treatment groups are comparable. In your experiment, usually you will have a control group and some test groups. So it depends on the nature of the trial. In addition, in general, as a general concept, the experiment diet are, test, are tested against a control diet, where the formulation is the same, except for the ingredients to be tested. Duration, as a reference, nutritional trials should last for a minimum of 12 weeks or until the weight is triplicated. Feeding, as previously described, feed can be provided manually or by automatic feeders. The frequency depends on the, previous, on the previously studies life stage of the fish and purpose of the trial. Sampling. The nature of the sampling and the frequency depends on the aim of the study. Sampling can be performed to evaluate growth, histology, fillet collection, fillet yield, digestibility, microbiome, stress, blood parameters. Lastly, data collection and analysis. Data can be collected on a daily basis, as well as weekly or monthly, and analyzed with proper statistics software to evaluate the presence or absence of statistical significance. As I said before, a particular mention has to be uh, done on advantages and challenges of a trial conducted in RAS. The main advantage, um, of course, is a the confined environment of the, um, of the study. So the fish confined in a uh, tank, they are not subject to predation. There is a water quality stability, temperature and the other parameters. Species flexibility, so you can adapt your system to the species that you are reading. Optimal feeding strategy, because the feeding is checked at each time, and it's um, precisely calculated before the beginning of the trial. Replicability, as we discussed before, so you have different number of tanks with different number of um, individuals, and uh, what basically what you have inside the tank stays there, and at the end you have uh, the results that you're going to um, analyze. Biosecurity. Biosecurity in RAS is, of course, uh, more strict than a commercial farm and also um, higher than a pond or a raceway. So the, um, the reliability of your data is even more compared to other type of um, farming system. What about the challenges? Of course, the high operating cost that we already described before because if you want to compare uh, a RAS system with a um, commercial farm in uh, open cages, the initial investment is higher. Duration of the trial. Of course, if something happens in a confined system, the risk that you're going to lose all the animals is higher than in a flow-through system. 
water quality stability as advantages also and uh, disadvantages or challenges because if the water quality is uh, not ideal the animal can suffer of the of course of the presence of metabolites inside the water short response time in case of technical or human failure this is something that of course uh, it can affect our system because in the event of a blackout in the event of um, lack, lackness of oxygen or whatever a confined system requires um, an action that must be uh, done in uh, minutes not in hours of course this will require highly trained staff and the time that you spend to train um, a staff properly of course it requires time as I mentioned before now I want to give you some information about uh, case studies that we have performed in uh, our facility as you can see from this slide the first one that I will uh, show you is the is a study that is part of a um, uh, European project the code is BIT01 it's a study of the impact of different inclusion level of bluefin tuna offal um, and on the growth performance of European sea bass the central coast lab bass so <clears throat> Talking about the experimental plan, the study was conducted in our system, um, comprehensive of 12 tanks of 130 liters each. The feeding phase was uh, performed for eight weeks, and there were, there were uh, 35 fish per tank. Four diets were tested in triplicate, control, 5% of inclusion of tuna meal, 10% and 15%. Sample weight was performed every two weeks. Temperature range was around 23 plus minus 2 degree, and oxygen content was kept above 7.5 milligram per liter. At the end of the trial, the whole body composition was performed on 15 fish per tank. This is how uh, generally uh, growth performance look like when you um, plot the data you know, into a graph. And as you can see from the, from the table, all the uh, main index were analyzed. So the initial weight has to be checked and there are not to be any significant difference among the, the replication and among the treatment otherwise the study uh, is already a fail uh, before starting the final weight analyzed with the respective ANOVA and uh, analysis and p-value so there was no significant uh, difference the SGR or the specific growth rate feed intake in gram FCR or the feed conversion ratio and the percentage of survival. As general, um, as general view, in this study uh, the results showed that there was no significant difference on um, uh, performance, growth performance among the treatment, even though the uh, final weight of the fish fed with a control diet was higher than uh, all the other uh, all the other treatments as well as the feed conversion ratio was lower in the control diet compared to the to the other diet the second study that i want to discuss is part of a horizon project called efficiency the study was the study code is ifn01 this trial was performed on uh, asian sivas normally named uh, Baramundi. It is a study on the influence of uh, microalgae, microcropsis, gravitan extract, on the growth morphological and body quality traits of uh, Asian Sivas at two different salinity. As you can see, the experimental plan, um, the trial was conducted in RAS with two twin system of six times 500 liter tanks. The feeding phase was performed for 10 weeks and 50 fish were split in each tank. Sample weight was, was performed at day zero, middle and the end of the trial. The temperature was kept in a range of 27 plus minus 2 degrees and two uh, salinity were tested. System 1, seawater 38 plus minus 2 ppm. System 2, brackish water 14 plus minus 2 ppm. At the end of the trial, grow performance and whole body composition of 15 fish per tank were performed. 
As you can see, the graph showed a similar to the one uh, previously described. And from the table, the time I'm lighting, you can see how um, the performance were affected by uh, the different diet, especially the feed conversion ratio. So the, um, uh, there is significant difference between the two systems. So system one, seawater, and the FCR was slightly higher than in system two, as well as feed intake, where uh, in system one, the feed intake was significantly higher than in uh, system two. The last case study is uh, ADT02, is a Sinomata project, and we were testing the influence of design of viral biocarriers on their performance in moving bad biofilm reactors in a recirculated aquaculture system. This can be uh, listed as a other type of study. The experimental plan was, um, the study was performed in a RAS system of 15 to 300 liter tanks. The duration was eight weeks, uh, sorry, 10 weeks. 100 liter of uh, biomedia in each um, tank. Five treatments were tested in triplicate, named biocarrier 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Temperature was in range of 14 plus minus 3 degrees. Salinity, the study was conducted in fresh water. And as a result, we were testing the cumulative uh, TAN conversion, maximum TAN conversion rate, cumulative bicarbonate consumption, and TAN conversion by surface area. As you can see from the, from the graph, uh, bio uh, carrier one was tested as the best um, bio carriers that uh, transform uh, nitrogen, and all the other ones were uh, showing um, less performance on, uh, on the conversion. Lastly, section four monitoring and sampling. A wide range of sampling can be performed to evaluate difference among the experimental treatments. So uh, together with uh, the growth performance, you can perform different type of analysis. It depends, of course, on the aim of the project. For example, you can perform histology uh, sampling, uh, intestine, uh, anterior, middle, and posterior, liver, kidney, and gill, brain, muscle, and skin. Usually, you perform histology analysis to see if, in a, an additional study, as an example, if there is a, any uh, modification of the structure or of the um, physiology of the um, organs of the tissue correlated to the um, different ingredients that you are testing. Fillet coloration, as previously described, the coloration of the fillet is something that is really important for the marketable uh, approach to the consumers. So you can perform uh, pigment retention. You can use um, some device that is shown in a picture called the chromometer. So you will uh, record data of um, a different wavelength. You record the spectrum of the lightness, the spectrum of the um, red blue component of the pigments and the blue-yellow as well. A colorimetric scale that is here shown in the picture or salmofan lineal, it's a commercial way to define if the coloration of a trout or a salmon is on the range for, a, for the market or not. Microbiome, you can uh, assess the bacterial population in uh, and its distribution in intestine, feces, sludge, mucus. Blood sampling performed to check plasma, serum, and some, uh, for, example, uh, for example, some biochemistry parameters. And lastly, approximate composition, uh, such as dry matter, protein um, uh, content, uh, crude fat, ash, fiber, energy, amino acid, fatty acid, to have a general overview of the um, uh, testing diets and the effect that they have on the composition and uh, even in the organoleptic um, parameters of a, of a fillet of a muscle. So, finally, um, I want 
thank you all for your attention. And as I said on the previous slide, if you have any question, please contact me by email, and that would be it would be my pleasure to answer your question. Have a nice day. Bye.